everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. We rolling with these 33 years of prison stories, man. As you can see, I'm not in my regular place, man. We having some uh, renovations done to the bathroom. So I am currently in a hotel on the road. But I know y'all got to hear y'all stories. So I'm working for y'all, man. So salute. TBP, man, I, I get the job done for y'all. Um, I hope all of y'all are watching these videos and getting some out of these videos. I hope y'all are sharing these videos, man, with these young people out here. I hope y'all are liking and subscribing. I do want to bring this to your attention. I, I always mention subscribe because I'm just learning about all of this analytics and stuff like that, but it was pointed out to me, and I looked at it and seen it Uh the month of January last month, man, we had 200,000 plus viewers watched in January that were not subscribed. So I'm asking you, if you like these videos, if you rock with TBP, please make sure you subscribe and hit that button, man. 200 plus thousand. If we had that many more subscribers, if they hit that button, man, we'd be on our way to spreading this positive energy all over the world. And that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. So, uh, y'all hit that button for me, man. If you if you really rocking with TBP, man, I appreciate you, man. Salute. All right, we back on uh, these 33 years of prison stories, man. Y'all going to have two of me, man. Y'all got me in my shadow today, man. So, y'all going to have to rock with me. But we are back on Sussex 2, man. Round 2 on Sussex 2. It was crazy, uh from the get-go, man, because I'm going back. I left Sussex 2 and went to Greensville. Now, years later, I'm coming right back to Sussex 2, which I never wanted to leave in the first place because, as I told y'all, I was in a good space. I was in a good, you know, environment, and um, I had already solidified myself and my space on there, so I was cool. But, like I say, you know, with the charge that I had for the phone, they sent me right back up there. You got to go to the next level up. That was the next level up. I went there. Um, I go straight to the hole because I leave from segregation. So when you leave from segregation, you go back to another institution in segregation. So I go back. I'm in segregation. You know, I'm seeing all these different officers that know me or whatnot. And um, they see me in segregation. They know about the charge because, you know, it's, it's all on the paperwork and everything. So they tripping out and everything. But I'm in there. I'm trying to get out of the hole now because I've been in there for a minute. So I'm trying to get out, but I got to wait to get ICA'd and all of that, you know. Um, so the unit manager of the segregation building that, I am, uh, that I'm in is a dude that used to be a CO way back in the day when I was on Mecklenburg. I know him. I knew his brother. You know, he, uh, <laughs> he done moved his little way up in the ranks, man. He was the CO, actually, the Marty. Uh, my homeboy, D.C. Marty, I told y'all, put that Bethlehem in. So that right there got him promoted once he got through that ordeal. Then I believe he ended up marrying a, 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 warden's, a warden's daughter, you know, and, and that don't hurt neither. So he just moving up in the rank every way he can. Like I say, man, he was, uh, he was one of them kind of officers that you meet. You meet these kind, man. They... They play both sides of the fence. They act like they cool and they all right with you. But at the same time, their main goal and main objective is to move up in the ladder in the administration. So those type of officers are dangerous, man, because they play the 50 and you don't know where they coming from. He knew me. He tried to act like he was cool with me. But at the same time, I'm telling him what my situation is. I shouldn't be in the hole, man. I should be on population. I'm going to beat the charge on appeal. I'm waiting on my answer for the appeal. So, you know, I, either way, I've still served my time in segregation, so I should be, you know, on the on the yard, right? Oh, I'm going to get you. I got you. Hold on. You know, da, 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 da. But he playing games. And um, I'm steady sitting back there wasting time. Uh, 
Mon is on the yard. You know, he found out I'm I'm there. I'm in the hole. He comes and holler at me. Sussex too, just like all other institutions I told you. Once you're there and you leave, those institutions change, man. And within years, they change. They flip over. You know, it's a whole new atmosphere. It's a whole new uh, administration. There's new players. There's new inmates. There's new uh, convicts. It's, it's just a different institution. Once you leave and come back, it's never the same. So, Mon is telling me, uh, uh, he comes to the fence and he holler at me. I'm hollering out there at the fence to him through the window. He like, man, when you getting out? I'm like, I don't know. I should be getting out any day, man. I'm just waiting to see the ICA because I don't, you know what I'm saying, have a charge, you know, that, 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 that's going to stick. I know I'm going to beat this charge, man. You know what I'm saying? I appealed it. I got good grounds. I'm going to beat this charge. It's guaranteed. So, uh, yeah, he said, man, well, this crazy, man, because now, man, you just coming back and I'm in for a transfer. They're going to move me any day. I'm like, man, that's crazy. So I'm hoping I can get out on the yard with mom before I actually, before he actually get moved, you know. So we, uh, he said, man, I'm going to write you a letter. I got to tell you something. So he write me a letter, you know. Uh, one of the kitchen workers end up getting me the letter. A couple of days later, I get the letter. I read the letter. You know, he telling me, you know, how the institution is, how much has changed, who in power, what's going on on the institution. You know, he tells me <laughs> the, the, the words I didn't want to hear, man. He tells me they just came on this institution and they done swept this institution, man. They just had a major shakedown, man. We was on lockdown for over a month. They went through, man. They found about 10, 12 phones, man. They really on these phones real hard on this institution. They done wiped them all off the institution. They looking for them. They keeping their ears open and eyes open for these phones. And, man, there's hardly no phones on this compound at all. And then he hit me with, but I got one. <laughs> and he said I was going to leave it with my cellie. I've been in the cell with him for about four years. I told him I was going to leave him with him, man. But now you here. You my brother. You know, if you need this phone, I'll leave it for you if you don't get out before I get out I have somebody give it to you when you get out so now I got more incentive to get out man I'm excited than anything man because I told y'all now by now I'm addicted to the phone even though I'm just coming off the incident with the phone and I know better and I know I should not be dealing with no phones no more that's what addiction is I'm addicted to the phone you know I got cut off from a lot of people because you know the phone got took abruptly so I needed the phone back. I wanted the phone back. Now I got access to a phone. So he's telling me, man, you get out here, get the phone, you know, and I'm going to hold it for you. So, you know, uh, a couple of weeks go by. I'm arguing with the people about why I ain't out, what y'all going to do, man. I need to be out of this hole. You know what I'm saying? The charge, you know what I'm saying, is bogus. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I done served my time. They giving me the runaround, man. I started acting up back there, man. I started screaming on the COs, man. You know, beating on the door, asking to see the supervisor, uh, asking to see the sergeant, the building sergeant, asking to see the uh, unit manager, which his name was Clary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm putting his name out. His name was Clary. So I'm asking to see him or whatever. You know, everybody keep telling me to calm down, keep telling me this, that, and the third, or don't mess around and get no more charges while you back here, or you not going to get out, and all of this foolishness. But... You know, like I said, I felt like I was in the right, so I was protesting. You know, I was demonstrating. I was making noise back there. I, w I wanted to get up out of there. You know, like I said, when you in the hole, you in segregation, man. You just in a room with nothing. You know what I'm saying? You stuck. You know, and I and, and that's like, you know, crazy. I know a lot of people say in the comments, man, it's crazy that you got a jail within the jail, but that's what you have. You have a jail within the prison. So, you know, you cut off from everything. I'm looking out the window. I'm seeing dudes come out on the yard and working out. I'm seeing dudes that I knew. I'm seeing dudes going back and forth to, to chow, back and forth to commissary. And I'm stuck back here in the hole, and I'm trying to get out here too. You know, plus I got this phone waiting for me, so it's crazy. Um, I remember one day, man, I kept asking to see somebody, man, and they had an old raggedy floor officer. He ran his mouth telling me stop making all this noise or whatever, whatever. And he just antagonized me so much, so I started, you know, be you know, belittling him, and and we going back and forth. So he called the uh, billing lieutenant over there. The billing lieutenant come over there and talk to me. I'm still, you know, acting out and barking at him. So he gets uh, Clary to come over there. The unit manager. The unit manager is basically just like assistant warden. 
that means he runs a whole building. He don't answer to nobody but the warden. So he is, he essentially is an assistant warden. So he comes over there, come to the door like he know me, which he do. So he get to talk, man, look, man, you can't be making all that noise around right here. You can't be banging on that door. You can't be doing this and doing that. I'm like, look, man, I don't supposed to be back here. I'm waiting on paperwork right now. Any day from Greensville that I beat this charge, man. So what am I back here for? You know what I'm saying? Plus the charge is already over. The time that they gave me for the charge has already been served. There's no purpose for me to be back here. Y'all just holding me for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Bad space or whatever. I'm not trying to hear that, man. I've been locked up too long to be going through that. Get me up out of this hole. Look, you don't call no shots. You don't you don't run nothing now. You know, come on now, come. I'm like, come on, man. You you know me and I know you. Don't pull that car with me because we got people on the gate listening and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? I know who you is. You know who I am. You can't bully me. You scared these dudes. You don't scare me, man. I know who you are. I remember when you was a CO, scared to death. You know, man, I won't never scare you. You got me uh, messed up. Yeah, you can try to impress them. I'm going to tell you right now, you keep banging on that door. I'm going to send the people over here. They're going to put you on the bed. I said, yeah, all right. All right, they're going to put me on the bed. You know what time it is. Yeah, he said, what? What time it is? You, you threatening? You got threats? I said, yeah, I got threats. Yeah, yeah, I got threats. You talking about coming in here and put me on the bed? You know what's going to happen to them. They come in here and put me on the bed. He said, what's going to happen to them? They can't be around me no more. That's what. They can't be around me no more. So you can come in here, put me on the bed, and do what you got to do, and we're going to go through that whole process, but you can't never let me out on the yard no more if they're working out there. Because ain't nobody going to put their hands on me and be walking around me. You know that just like I know that. So, okay, so you bad. I said, I've been bad. I've been bad. If I ain't bad enough, I do until the bad man get here. But you know you're not going to come in here and try to handle me like you handling these dudes. You're, all right, I'm just telling you, don't keep banging on that door. I done said what I got to say, and that's that. And he walked away, and I'm saying, okay. And I done said what I got to say, and I'm banging on the door as he leave. You know what I'm saying? So he go a couple of, uh, say then start talking to somebody else. I'm still banging on the door, banging on the door. So he come back down, and he said, oh, you trying me? I said, you trying me? You trying me? He told me something, don't push it. I'm telling you, don't push it. I said, man, I ain't trying to hurt that, man. Get me up out this hole. You know what I'm saying? Get me up out this hole or get me up off of this institution. Either or. It don't make me no difference. I ain't, I ain't trying to be here if you don't want me here. I ain't trying to be here, but I'm not going to be setting up in this segregation when I ain't got no business setting up in this segregation. And I'm going to get these phones to ring because I'm going to get my people to be calling up here ASAP all day, every day. He tell me, do what you got to do. Do it. I said, okay, it's a done deal. He walk away, I'm banging some more. Bang, 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 bang. You know, it's crazy. That's how you got to live. When you in that environment, that's the, 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 you know, the, the position that they put you in, that you got to stand up for yourself. Because if you don't stand up for yourself, it ain't nobody else. And they would drag you. They would drag you. They would just leave me back there knowing that I shouldn't be back there just because. You know, because they fit their criteria because they don't have enough bed space. Because they got to do this and because they got to do that. That ain't got nothing to do with me. If I don't supposed to be on here, I ain't trying to be on here. You know what I'm saying? Or back here, I'm not trying to be. So, that goes on, man, for a couple of days, man, maybe a week or something later, man. They come around there and they tell me, man, I've been released to the yard. I'm going to get out. Just hold on. You know what I'm saying? The paperwork has already been done. It's just a matter of me getting bed space. So, I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm not going to stay back here, man, being quiet, man, for weeks on, on end. Well, you going to get out, man. You already been released to the yard. It's just a matter of time. So, I'm like, okay, you on the list. So, I'm like, all right. So, I'm trying to be calm. And then, man... He comes around one day and tell me, man, he get ready to leave. He got to go, man. He leaving up off of the institution. So I'm like, man, my dude going to be gone, man. My little brother, man, he ain't going to be out there. It's crazy. Munchie is already gone. He's already been transferred. Mine is the only one left, you know. Uh, so he tell me he going to leave the phone with somebody in particular, and that person would get me the phone as soon as I get out on the yard. So I'm like, okay, that's wild. That's crazy. I can't wait to get up out there. So as I'm waiting to get up out there, man, you know, uh, I think it was maybe the following week, I ended up um, getting released. They put me out on the yard, man. I go up to the block. I get up in the block. They got me. They got the blocks now segregated. Whereas to if you got certain amount of time or you go up for parole a certain amount of time or you got this it was segregated by time how much time you had so you know i had life sentences so they put me in the lifers block you know i ended up going in the lifers block 
I went in the corner sale on the top tier. I ended up going to sale with a dude named Cody. Salute to Cody. You know, he's still up in the belly of the beast, man. Hoping he get his liberation soon. I've met his son since I've been out here. Cool little dude, Cody Jr. Salute. Um, so I go in the sale with Cody, man. You know, I knew him already. You know, we had knew each other prior. So we get to chopping it up a little bit or whatnot. And um, now I'm looking for the dude to give me the phone. The mom got me the phone and sent me the phone. So sure enough, man, I won't even out, man, a day and a half, man. And uh, probably the next day. I came out that day, half a day. Then the next day, within the next day, the dude sent word up there to me. He had something for me for mom. I said, okay, I can't wait. So, man, tell me who to give it to to get to you because it's valuable stuff. I don't want to put it in the wrong hands. He gave it to a dude. I told him who to give it to. The dude brought the joint to me. I get the joint. I take it in the cell. I open it up. I get it. I look at it. It's the smallest phone I seen. You know, mine had a note in there. I read the note. He said, man, you got about a month on the phone, you know, and it's going to cut off. So that gave you a month to try to do what you got to do, man, to try to get you another one to get in position, man. Love you, bro. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, just like that, man. I'm right back in the game, man. Messing with these phones, man. They just they just had me, man. So I got the phone, man. It was so small, man. It was a little flip phone. I could open it up. I could text, you know, get pictures or whatever. You know, but like I said, I had a limited time left on the phone. It was going to get cut off. His, his uh, people was paying the bill. They weren't going to pay it no more because they knew that he wasn't going to have it. But I still had about a good, you know what I'm saying, a month left or something like that. So... I'm using the phone a couple of weeks or a month, somewhere up in there. I'm using it. You know, I'm trying to make arrangements, trying to do this, trying to do that. Still trying to get another one. Still being hard here, you know. Couldn't get enough of that phone, man. I started reaching out to the people that I had been talking to on the phone, trying to let them know, you know, I got another phone, da-da-da-da-da. Um, I'm out there maybe about two weeks, and I get the paperwork back that said, I beat the charge, man. I beat the phone charge, man, because they did not actually get the phone up off of my person. And the way the charge is written, it says possession of a, a, a possession of electronic device on or in a in my person. It was not on or in my person or any place that I have accessibility to. They did not get it from none of those things, none of those topics. They didn't get it off of me. They didn't get it off anywhere that I had accessibility to. They got it out of the sergeant's bathroom, out of the trash can. So I ended up beating the charge on appeal. So by law, they were supposed to send me back to where I came from or back to a same level that I came from. By law, this is what they're supposed to do by their rules and regulations. So now I'm sitting on the institution. I can push forward to get moved. And I say something about it, and they say they're going to get around to it. But right now, I'm here. I've been ICA. They're going to get around to looking at the paperwork or whatever. I said, I got the paperwork. I'm showing y'all the paperwork. They said, okay, but you already have been processed on here. This all has to go back to the administration. They have to, you know, come up with a determination. Whenever it's up to them to make something right that they, they made wrong, they're going to take their time. They're going to do what they want to do when they want to do it. But whenever you are in the wrong, you will be held accountable ASAP without a shadow of a doubt. And you will get 100% of whatever punishment they got for you. But when the shoe is on the other, other foot, they just be dragging and dragging and dragging. That's the hypocrisy in the whole system. You see what I'm saying? But I really didn't press them anymore after I initially went to them and spoke my piece and said what I had to say because I was already in possession of a phone. So I didn't want to make too much noise. I didn't want to antagonize them. I didn't want them coming at me. So I laid in the cut and, you know, thought I was having all the sense using the phone. I couldn't really facilitate what I wanted to facilitate with. But now that I had left Sussex and went to Greensville, when I was on Sussex, I knew some officers on Sussex that was, you know, doing a few things. So now I said, well, maybe I'll reach out to one of them to try to get me a phone, you know. And that's what I did. You know, I reached out to to one of them, tried to get me a phone, you know, told them, you know what I'm saying, this is what I'm, I'm trying to do, whatever, whatever. They was like, look, man, these phones on here are dangerous, man. You can't get these phones. They, they really own these phones, man. They be cracking down on it, man, and it's hard to get something in. They be cracking down on us. This is an officer. 
They be cracking down on us. They don't even, you know, they shake us down. They pet us down real good. They run. I'm like, look, man, I'm trying to get this phone. I got you. I'm going to pay you. You know, he said, well, let me check it out. Let me see what's going on. I'll get back with you. So in the meantime, in between time, I'm steady using the other phone. It's getting ready to run out. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can do. And, you know, like I say, the, the, I can see the, the transformation in the institution. The institution was different now. The players was different now. Like I say, you got even these game dudes in there now. But I won't really have to deal with them unless I went really out on the yard. Because now, you know, I'm in a lifer's uh, block. It ain't a whole lot of them with life because them, them, most of those dudes are young dudes. They got 50, 60 years under the new law, but they didn't got they, they don't have life. So I'm in a lifeless block. Everybody in the block got life. You know, it's crazy in this block, man, because now they got all these rules and regulations, man. They 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 they, they telling you uh, at this time I think you can still smoke, but you won't supposed to be smoking out on the block. Dudes are smoking out on the block when they out there at the parks playing cards, whatever, smoking in the block because you used to be able to do that. Now you can't do that. You only can smoke inside your cell. So they was coming in there, man. They was just handling them now because, like I told you, when the institution first opened, the convicts have, you know, most of the sale on the institution. They may they may tell you they don't, the administration would dip, but the convicts do. They're going to dictate how the, the movement go. They're going to dictate how the atmosphere is because they're going to impose their will because they know more about prison than these guards do because the guards are new. But now as time go on, it starts shifting and you have these guards that have a little experience under their belt and they start enforcing the laws and the rules more because they see the inmates or convicts are a little bit more apprehensive to put their hands on them, apprehensive to hurt them or apprehensive to do something to them because of the, they know the consequences. But when they first start there, they're scared. They're scared to death. Because they don't know what these dudes might do to them. They do still be barking at them and saying this and threatening them or whatever, and it scares them. But once they've been there for a little while and they get the they get the knowledge of what's going on, they oh yeah, they just talking. They ain't really trying to, you know, get no more time. They ain't really trying to get sent all the way up in the mountains. They ain't trying to go back up in that courtroom. And they understand that once they start understanding that, then they start imposing their will on you. So the that dichotomy of the whole situation changes. You see what I'm saying? So as the time go on and the institution is not no more new, it's not in its infantry no more, once they get a little older, that's what started to happen. By the time I got back, this is what was happening. They was running the institution. You know, they was talking crazy. You know, like I say, they catch dudes smoking in there. They come in there, they walk, they do their rounds and stuff. They see uh, ashes or something on the floor. They run back over there and tell the sergeant. The sergeant runs over there and tell the billing lieutenant. So the billing lieutenant might come in there and say, if I come in here again and find ashes on the floor, y'all gonna be locked down for three days. Or I'm gonna take the microwave for a week. Or we gonna uh, cut the movie station or all of these things they threatening us with now in order to keep these dudes in line. You see what I'm saying? And they seem like small things, but they was luxuries to a dude that has nothing. You know, so they would do those type of things and I won't even used to that. It was just crazy. You know, they let you use a microwave at a certain time now. They put it in sometimes, then they take it out. Uh, you have to be in line to use the phone. You have to be in line to use the mic. It was just crazy. They was trying to control every piece of movement or thoughts that you had in prison. And this was crazy because we actually in a block with all lifers. These dudes got life. And you're trying to handle them as if they're a child, as if they're an infant. But this is what prison is, man. That's why I tell you, young fellas, man, be happy and be blessed that you out here in this free world, man. Because you don't want no parts of this life right here, man. It's just you got 50, 40, 60, 70 year old people, you know, being handled by 18, 19, 20 year old kids that just came fresh out of high school and got a job now. You know, and they telling you what to do and they yelling at you and they screaming at you and you old enough to be their father, their grandfather, you know, and then they got these people up in the booth with the gun standing over top of you for if you do say anything smart back to them, if you do say anything aggressive back to them, they ready to shoot you, you know, they ready to shoot you, man. So it just was crazy. I just had to get adjusted to that. I had to adapt, cope and adjust to my new environment. At the same time, dealing with this phone, trying to get the phone. So, I can remember, man, like I say, it was going on for a while, man. And um, the phone ended up running out on me. 
So I ain't have no more resources to, to, to make the moves that I wanted to make, to talk to the people that I wanted to talk to. I kept pressing the officer that I had asked to get me the phone. I upped the price, you know, to try to make it more appealing to them. They told me to give them a week or something. They was going to get back with me and let me know what they was going to do. I already had somebody who was going to purchase the phone, give them the phone and everything. All they had to do was pick the phone up, collect their money and bring me the phone, you know. So that was going on, man. I ended up um, I ended up getting moved. I think they moved me for whatever reason, man. Oh, no, they moved uh, they moved Cody. So when they moved Cody, I was in the cell by myself. I didn't know who I was going to get. You got to have some type of sale partner that you can get along with because, like I say, I'm trying to get a phone. And in order to get this phone, I got to have somebody in the cell that I could trust to a certain degree. I don't trust nobody fully, you know, but I had to have somebody that I could trust to a certain degree. I wasn't even going to tell them that I had the phone, but I had to be prepared for if they saw me with the phone or noticed that I had the phone. I still had to have some level of trust with them that they won't get scared and go tell the people or either write a note and let the people know I got the phone and people run down on me. So when I'm in there by myself, man, they ended up putting somebody in my cell that I really did not feel comfortable with. Um, <laughs> I definitely ain't feel comfortable with this person because they was too scary. They was too angsty. And I knew that I won't be able to get around them like talking about because they was nosy. They watched everything. They were scared. It was like they didn't know nothing about prison. So they was real, real nervous. So, um, man, I ended up um, talking to this other dude that was in the block. He had been down a while. I knew him but didn't know him. Other people knew him. Other people vouched for him saying he was cool. He worked in the kitchen all the time. He go to work in the kitchen, I think, like at... Uh, 11, 11 at night and he didn't come back till like um, 10 in the morning so that was great for me if I could get in there with him I would have those free hours to use the phone because I wasn't going to let him know about the phone anyway no matter how you know many people vouch for him I still won't go let him know about it I came up with a system about where I could hide the phone you know what I'm saying and get away with it and keep it at certain times and use it so I ended up talking to him because he was in the cell by himself. I ended up moving in the cell with him. Boom, he was going to work, whatever, whatever. I kept working on the CO to be able to get the phone again. So everything, everything was going all right, man. I ended up talking to my counselor. My counselor was asking me about the charge and what did I want to do. Did I want to get transferred back to the same institution? Did I want to go to another three? I told her it doesn't matter. You can send me right back to Greensville or you can send me to another three because as you can see, I beat the charge. Make sure the charge is not on my record. I don't want to be held accountable for something that I already beat because I know how they'll do. They'll mess around and you beat a charge, but they'll keep it in your file and it don't supposed to be in your file because that can be used against you when they going to do your annual review or when you're going up for parole and they got this paperwork in there that does not even supposed to be in there because you actually beat the charge. But I know the Virginia DOC, they don't care nothing about that because they may think you got away by the skin of your teeth, but they leave it in there and, and put a little note or, or a little asterisk beside it and say, he beat the charge, but we believe you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, man. It's totally wrong, but they do that because I've got cool with counselors over the years and they've told me stuff like that and they showed me stuff like that. They be in your file that don't supposed to be in your file. So you have to raise a stink about that in order to get those things out of your file. As I told y'all, Bo Billy recently told me when they sent him out of state, he found out that they had some stuff in his file saying that he was a sex offender, just that he ain't never had a sex charge in his life. But they put that in his file knowing that he was going out of state, hoping that the administration get that and the word gets out and hopefully somebody take his life or somebody in him and they ain't had to deal with him no more. These are the dirty games that DOC will play with you sometime and it's at your expense and it's at your life, you know. So I, I was aware of these type of things even when I was locked up because like I said, I had been cool with certain counselors that had informed me of this information. So I was telling her to make sure it was out of my file. She's saying she was, but I didn't trust her either, you know. So like I say, I was moving. I was staying in my own space, man. Dude was starting to go to work. I was working out in the cell, coming out every now and then, playing cards, playing the phone, you know, using the microwave and back in my cell. I wanted to create a routine that was already 
seeing as how I do my time for when I did get the phone, if I got the phone, then my routine wouldn't change. You see what I'm saying? I was going to even get the phone and still come out there and use the phone just once a day. You know, just so people can see me on the phone so they wouldn't get on my trail when I did get the phone and I didn't use the phone as much or, or, or I did keep coming out here using the phone, they would be, you know, none the wiser did I actually have a phone in myself. So I was planning and plotting for all of that man to come through. And then, man, sure enough, man, I see the CO when he come back on ship and everything, and he was like, uh, yeah, let me holler at you. So I talked to him or whatever. They said, man, so you say I can get this? I said, yeah. I said, he said, man, well, you know, put this much more on it, man, and I'll take care of it. So I was like, boom, okay, done deal. So... I took, took care of that, told my people to take care of that. They said to tell them, you know, see them at this time, at this place. They're going to take care of it. Everything is all in place. And boom, man, it's about four days later. Man, I'm just laid up in there. And the dude come in there. He come knock on my door. He said, yo, um, you ready? I said, ready for what? You, you, you straight? He said, yeah, I'm straight. I said, you got it? He said, yeah. I said, well, how am I going to get it? He said, don't worry, I'm going to drop it off in a minute. I just want you to be, be ready. When I come around here and I put my arm through the door, be prepared, man, because I'm going to keep it moving. I'm like, cool, let's do it. And showing up, man, um, about 20 minutes later, he come by. He, he, he go up in his coat. He pull up all his coat. He put his hand through the door. I grab it. I look at it. I open it. He already gone. He ain't stopped the wait or nothing. He already gone because his camera's in here, man. He already gone. I open it, man. I see it. And man, I'm in awe because it's a better phone, man. I'm talking about I got everything on here. I got internet access. I got, you know, videos. I can call. I can FaceTime. I can do everything, man. So, man, we are off and running again. The game is back on. out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.